In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Welcome everybody to this very special occasion uh, as we celebrate the centenary of the sisters here in this part of the world, I think in Australia generally, but certainly here in the WA. I think it's actually 101 years. We weren't quite able to do it last year. We all know the reason why that's the case. But luckily, things have improved a little bit. And it's a great opportunity for all of us to gather together on this special feast day, of course, which is also the Solemnity of St. Joseph. In welcoming everybody here, and I hope you all, I'm sure you all feel very welcome here, I particularly want to welcome the sisters, and especially those who've travelled from around the country to be here today with their sisters here in Perth. It's a great joy to see so many of you here, and I hope that it's a day that's a a time of real renewal for you in your sense of the Lord's special call to you and your vocation. I also welcome Archbishop Hickey, the Emeritus Archbishop, uh, in whose footsteps I'm doing my best to follow, uh, and Bishop Bianchini, the retired Bishop also of Geraldton, and the other priests who've joined us as well, and of course the priests who are resident here, who bring so much uh, extra joy and life to the community. So we come with a great sense of thanksgiving, Thanksgiving for what the last hundred years has meant. Thanksgiving for the reality of what we have around us, not just the buildings, but the people, more importantly. And Thanksgiving because we're greatly full of confidence in what the Lord will do with us and for us into the future. So let's just pause for a moment and perhaps bring to mind those things, those people for whom we particularly want to be grateful as we celebrate this Mass this morning. Now, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus the Lord speaks. When your days are ended and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne secure forever. I will be a father to him, and he a son to me. Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me, and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The promise of inheriting the world was not made to Abraham and his descendants on account of any law, but on account of the righteousness which consists in faith. That is why what fulfills the promise depends on faith, that it may be a free gift and be available to all of Abraham's descendants, not only those who belong to the law, but also those who belong to the faith of Abraham, 
who is the father of all of us. As scripture says, I have made you the ancestor of many nations. Abraham is our father in the eyes of God, in whom he put his faith, and who brings the dead to life and calls into being what does not exist. Though it seemed Abraham's hope could not be fulfilled, he hoped and he believed, and through doing so, he did become the father of many nations, exactly as he had been promised. Your descendants will be as many as the stars. This is the faith that was considered as justifying him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you O lord Uh, jacob was the father of joseph but the husband of mary of her was born jesus who is called christ And this is how Jesus Christ came to be born. Here his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honour and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this, when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. The the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus the feast of St. Joseph, so important really every year for the little sisters of the poor and for all of those of you here who live with them and those who work alongside them and support them. I think this feast day takes on special significance this year, both because we celebrate the centenary or the centenary plus one uh, of the opening of the home here at Glendalock but also because Pope Francis has proclaimed this year, 2021, to be a year specially dedicated to the memory of this great saint. So as we thank God for the wonderful gift which this home, and it really is a home, has been and continues to be for the people of our Archdiocese, thanks of course to the generous commitment of so many sisters and the commitment of all of those who support them over the last 100 years. As we do all of that, I think we have a special reason to reflect on St. Joseph, who together with Mary provided a loving and nurturing home for Jesus. 
just as here, <coughs> pardon me, the sisters provide a loving and nurturing home for those who reveal the face of Jesus. To mark the beginning of this special year, Pope Francis has written an apostolic letter. It's called Patris Corde, which in Latin uh, means with a father's heart. It's the fatherhood of Saint Joseph, which is right at the centre of the Pope's reflections in that letter. And I think many of you would agree with me when I see such when I say that such a reflection is very much needed in our own particular time and place in history. In the letter, and I really would encourage people to read it if you haven't read it yet, it's not very long. In the letter, the Pope speaks of St Joseph as a beloved father, as a tender and loving father, as an obedient father, as an accepting father, as a creatively courageous father, as a working father, and as a father in the shadow. In thinking of St Joseph in these ways, I imagine that every single one of us, whether we be ourselves a father or a mother, a son or a daughter, a spouse, a religious sister or brother, a priest or deacon, or someone who's chosen to live the single life for whatever reason, we can find ourselves in some way reflected in these images, these ideas about St Joseph. It's as if Pope Francis sees in St Joseph someone who expresses almost every dimension of the Christian journey of life and faith which every single one of us must undertake and that therefore everyone can find in St Joseph both something to admire and something to strive for. There are too many things for me to talk about this morning, but as I reflected on that letter, there were two aspects which particularly struck me and I wanted just to mention briefly. They are St Joseph the obedient father and St Joseph the accepting father. It seems to me that being accepting and being obedient are very closely related in our Christian understanding of the relationship that we're called to have with the Lord. When Joseph, together with Mary, hurried back to Jerusalem, you'll remember, to look for their 12-year-old son, who'd failed to join the caravan on the journey home, they eventually found him in the temple. And when he told them that they should not have worried because they should have realised that he would be about his father's business, the Gospel tells us that Mary and Joseph did not understand what he was saying. I don't think this should surprise us. From the moment when Mary and Joseph first became aware of the extraordinary way in which God had stepped into their lives, they must have begun a very challenging very difficult journey of faith themselves as they sought to understand just what God was doing by calling them to care for Jesus as his mother and as far as everybody else was concerned as his father. To know that Jesus had been given to them, entrusted to them by God, that was one thing. To understand exactly what this meant and what it would mean for them in the future, and how they were meant to respond to this overwhelming reality in their lives, that would have been another thing altogether. We can imagine, I think, how often the two of them must have discussed all of this together. How often the two of them, together but also privately on their own, must have spent long hours in prayer and reflection trying to work all this out, trying to understand God's plan for them. How often must they have been surprised 
as they watched Jesus grow and sometimes confused and worried and of course very often delighted as Jesus grew into a child, a young adolescent and eventually a young man who would eventually leave home to begin a ministry that, as it would eventually have become clear to everybody, including Mary and Joseph, he was, if he was still alive, a ministry that would bring him to his death. How, must, how often must Mary and Joseph relied on each other and on their common faith to help them accept and help them be obedient to God's plan, this mysterious plan that unfolded before their eyes. Every single one of us here in the chapel this morning would know from our own experience that it isn't always easy to understand, let alone to accept and embrace in faith what God is doing in our lives and what God is asking of us in our journey. Like Joseph and Mary, we sometimes just don't understand. But in those moments, those times of confusion and of doubt, we can look to Joseph and Mary, not only for an example to follow, but also for their prayerful support. As we uh, seek to be accepting of and obedient to the will of God. As Pope Francis reminds us in his letter, and I'm quoting him here, he says, only the Lord can give us the strength needed to accept life as it is, with all its contradictions, its frustrations and its disappointments. But just as God says to Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid, so he also says to us, do not be afraid. We need, the Pope goes on to say, to set aside all anger and disappointment and to embrace the way things are, even when they don't turn out as we would wish. The prayer of St Joseph for us, united with the prayer of Mary, his wife and our mother, will surely help us to open our hearts to God, trusting that God, who does love us beyond our understanding, is always leading us forward, even when we don't understand, to the place that he is calling us to be. Pope Francis concludes his letter with a prayer. So let me conclude these few words with that same prayer. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became a man. Blessed Joseph, to us show yourself a father and guide, a guide along the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, encourage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us join together now in proclaiming our faith on this special feast of St Joseph. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn now to God and make our prayers known to him. For the universal church, that under the leadership of Pope Francis, her mission of salvation may be advanced in every place under the patronage of St. Joseph. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Timothy, our Archbishop, adorn his auxiliary bishop and all the people of God in our country, that the Holy Spirit will enlighten us as we prepare for the plenary council. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our associates, volunteers, benefactors and friends, as we ask God for the many blessings bestowed on our home over the past 100 years, we remember with gratitude all who have contributed to making Glendalow a home for so many, and we commend them to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our architects, designers, builders, and all who have been involved in the realization of the Holy Family Villa, that God will always bless the work of their hands and use their skills for his greater glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live and work here in Glendalough Home and the Holy Family Villa, our residents, staff and sisters, that the Lord will continue to bless them and their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering the effects of the coronavirus and for world peace, may St. Joseph, our protector and guide, obtain health, peace and harmony for all men and women. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are dying, that St. Joseph may console them in their last hours and obtain eternal rest, light, and peace for all those who have gone before us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for all the gifts with which you fill our lives. We ask you to give us grateful hearts and use that generosity to help us reach out to others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as Saint Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and on this solemnity of Saint Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, the minions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, <coughs> all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. 
for, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, our Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and The Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God and the glory of Jesus, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy
Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Could you be seated for a moment, please? Good morning. Before reading the message from Mother General, on behalf of all the little sisters, I want to welcome you all and thank you for coming here on this very important day. Thank you firstly to our Archbishop Timothy, Archbishop Barry Hickey, Bishop Yankini, to our councillors Lisa Thornton and Adam Spagnolo. A special word of gratitude to the architect Salem Lee and his wonderful team who have worked very closely with Mother Anne who is now in France and thinking about us today. Their hard work has resulted in a very beautiful and functional home for the residents and now 12 independent units. Thank you. We're most grateful to all of you who have contributed in so many ways. We could never manage without you. Be assured that we confide all of you and your loved ones to St. Joseph, our protector. God bless you all. I will now read the letter which Mother General has sent us for the occasion from our mother house in France. Mother General has a great love of Glendalough, by the way, because she spent time here when we were only laying the foundation stone for our new home. So she's thinking about us in a special way today. From our mother house, Petitza des Pauvres, in saint Pern, France, the 19th of March, 2021. To all our little sisters, residents, associates, staff, benefactors and volunteers for the official opening of the Holy Family Villa and for the centenary of the arrival of the little sisters in Perth. How happy I am to send this message to you and to all who assist our community in Glendalough in so many ways whether those able to be present today or who are very much united in spirit as I am myself, with Mother Assistant Joseph Christine and Mother Provincial Anne Marie James, on this special day when you are celebrating both the official opening of the Holy Family Villa, which represents the end of several years of intense hard work and transformation of the site, and also the centenary, delayed due to the coronavirus pandemic, of the Little Sisters' presence in the city of Perth, since the foundation of the home on the 17th of May, 1920. It is a double celebration which you have chosen to mark today in a spirit of thanksgiving under the kindly gaze of St. Joseph in his special jubilee year, along with his blessed spouse, who is the holy patroness of the home as Our Lady of Perpetual Help. They have clearly watched over this residence during the joys and trials of these past 100 years, enabling it to remain functional and welcoming to the elderly throughout the decades up until the present day. It is to them that we entrust the following 100 years to come. I join with all present in expressing our great gratitude to the Most Reverend Timothy Costello, Archbishop of Perth, for coming to preside at this festive Eucharistic celebration 
as also to Emeritus Archbishop Barry Hickey, Bishop Justin Bianchini of Geraldton, Father Gordon Howell, the chaplain, and our priest friends concelebrating today who assist the community in so many ways. The current health regulations have unfortunately restricted the number of guests invited, but I'm delighted to greet councillors Lisa Thornton and Adam Spagnolo from the city of Stirling, representing the local authorities. And I seize this opportunity to thank them most sincerely for the support they continue to offer the home, especially during these difficult times. Our particular thanks goes naturally to those who have contributed to the building of the Holy Family Villa, the architect Salem Lee and his team, especially Frank Del Barello, the construction team led by Mark Jones, and all those who worked on the project. The independent living residents are so proud of their new surroundings. On this special day of Thanksgiving, I cannot neglect to thank the many faithful friends and benefactors who are still generously providing for the needs of the home, despite the health crisis, which is inflicting untold suffering, loss of life, and financial insecurity in all four corners of the world. Mother Mary Bernard and our community in Glendalough are truly indebted to you all. Let us give thanks together to St. Joseph for his unceasing care over the past 100 years towards all who live and work for our Glendalough home. And let us entrust the future to him, to Our Lady of Perpetual Help and St. John Jagan, who said, God will help us, the work is his. I assure you of my prayers for all of your personal intentions and for those of our little sisters in the mother house here who are praying fervently for a swift end to the pandemic in all countries. Sister Maria del Monte Auxiliadora, Superior General. Have our recessional hymn now. What about the huh? final blessing? Of the oh, the final blessing. Sorry, Your Grace. Of course. <laughs> I think too that there might be some instructions about what we're doing immediately after mass. Is that right? We, you did do that at the end or now? Do it now. Yeah. Uh, we're inviting um, anyone who would like to join us um, to join our Archbishop to. Um, um, so, uh, how to say, officiate the official opening of the Holy Family Villa, um, the, which involves cutting of the ribbon, unveiling of the plaque, and blessing of all the units. And then we um, would like you all to join us after that in the Marian Center for refreshments and um, more, more um, uh, ceremonies. <laughs> Well done, thank you. So my understanding is that we're uh, leaving the chapel immediately, concluding the Mass and going straight to the Holy Family Villas for the blessing. So those who are uh, able to follow along with us, that would be wonderful. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended.